Hey guys, so we're out here on Warrigo Way, the junction of Inaminka and Birdsville. And we've just spent three days doing a loop for the Simpson Desert. And we've been testing our new four-wheel drive uh, hybrid dual battery system range. And we've had some crazy weather, a lot of rain, a lot of strong wind, uh, but it's been a lot of fun. We've had some good weather as well. And uh, why don't you join us? for the next uh, short while to watch a uh, little adventure and learn more about our batteries. So it's 1pm now, we've been crossing the French line coming from Birdsville this morning. Uh, for those of you that don't know, that is a Simpson Desert in Australia. We are around 100 kilometres directly west from Birdsville in Queensland. We've been riding the vehicle since around 8 o'clock this morning for about a good 5 hours now, and it's 36 degrees outside, very hot out here in November. You don't traditionally come out here this time of the year, it's more popular during the winter months because it's simply too hot. We are very lucky to be out here at the moment because there has been rain in the region and as you can see behind me it's really quite lush and quite pretty out here at the moment and surprisingly the flies haven't been too bad. So we've come out here to do this desert crossing during a very hot time of the year to show you extreme conditions and results and how our batteries behave in these conditions out here. I wanted to point out a few things about the DCS lithium uh, hybrid dual battery system. I'm going to discuss an email that we receive almost on a daily basis asking the same few questions. So here we got an email from someone uh, by the name of Lachlan and he's looking at our 180 dual battery system which is this exact system we're running in the vehicle here. And he says I'm newish to 12 volts, so there's a few things about the system that I wanted to ask about. The first thing he asks is I've got a BCDC 1225D, does this unit have a function in your system? So that is simply a DC-DC charger with an integrated solar regulator, okay? Um, no, these DC-DCs or solar regulators are no longer, um, no longer have any function in our system because our system has all this integrated already. So the two batteries are connected directly to the vehicle's alternator and there also is a solar MPPT input. So there is an integrated solar regulator inside one of these two battery packs. So the existing solar um, solar supply or a portable panel simply plugs into this uh, regulator that's internally sealed and IP rated inside our batteries. Um, and that way any solar supply comes up on uh, our app and you actually see the solar input. Um, and DC-DCs are no longer required because Traditionally, they were developed for lead acid batteries or AGMs and gels. Um, now with lithiums, especially with our lithium batteries, the best way to connect them is directly to vehicle alternators. And we've done a separate video about all that before. Um, the second thing asks, if the two batteries act as one, how do they ensure I can always start my car? E.g. how do they prevent draining them? Well, the system comes with a Victron Smart Battery Protect. And that is simply a single pole um, load disconnect or a switch. And that little device is mounted in the back in the cabin and it switches off your load. So for example, you know, in this vehicle we're running two, uh, two refrigerators, one as a freezer, one as a fridge. And you know, should they be, should the batteries be drained down to that 20% level, 
um, that device simply opens circuits, protects and switches off those fridges so that you can always start your car. It's as simple as that. And that is also fully programmable and it also has Bluetooth, so very easy to set up and program. Um, your website shows circuit boards for an MPPT and also a BMS. Are these concealed in the battery or a separate product you recommend? So our DCS uh, battery management system is fitted and installed internally inside each of these batteries. Um, it is, uh, in these batteries is a 150 amp unit, which means it will do 150 amps continuous, uh, but provide power way beyond that. Um, so these batteries can easily provide, you know, 180 amps each. So you can run winches and refrigerators and compressors and anything that you want to run. Um, the beautiful thing is, it's all internally managed, it's sealed inside the battery packs, it's two batteries that drop in, it's a direct replacement of virtually every single vehicle. You're not modifying anything, you're not changing the vehicle alternator, it is a drop-in replacement system. Very easy to install, very simple to, um, to commission. Um, so there's no additional components required. The next question uh, he asks is, how are further batteries connected? I also want to run a third battery in the rear of my Prado. With our system, you, don't, you no longer require a third battery in the rear because these batteries are capable enough to run quite large inverters in the back of the car. In this car, we're actually running a 3000 watt inverter to power our drone and camera gear, um, the two refrigerators and recharge batteries and everything else we got to do and lighting systems. Um, so you don't need to run a third battery. It's just completely unnecessary. Um, but if you have massive power demands and you believe that you want to install a third battery down the track for whatever reason, um, all you do is install that third battery in the back if it's a 75 or a 90 or a 100 or an 80 or whatever, or it's one of our slimline 100s or 150s or 200 slims. Um, and you run that through a, for example, like a Victron DC-DC charger, okay? Um, a 30 amp charger can manage that off the back of these uh, batteries up the front. And again, it's fully programmable, so you can dial in the voltages and make sure you can always start your car. So it's very simple if you do want to run a third, but the whole idea of our system is you don't need a third battery anymore. Um, <clears throat> And then he asks, what's the uh, Smart Battery Protect? I've already discussed that, so that, that is the Load Disconnect, which is the programmable device that manages, you know, how, um, how much reserve is, is reserved in the batteries for engine starting. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, that's a very common email, and uh, it's nice to be able to talk to you guys about all that and explain all that. Um, and, you know, th the system is simplified. Um, and is, is very simple and very reliable for that reason. So we're gonna wind up here now, we're gonna keep pushing west, uh, look for a campsite for the night, uh, and we'll come back to you once we uh, set up the kitchen and start cooking dinner for tonight.
All right, so day two, uh, and we've had a uh, very interesting night last night. Had quite a severe um, storm come through, quite a lot of wind, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, didn't get much sleep. So um, after a beautiful day out here yesterday, last night was, uh, wasn't the best, but anyway, we've made some coffee. We're pushing through on day two now, um, <clears throat> and we're gonna do something a bit different this morning. So what we're gonna do, we've I've already disabled the um, Smart Battery Protect, so we're bypassing loads. Um, we've been running <clears throat> all the fridges, all our cooking last night that you saw. Um, we've just made some coffees. Now I'm gonna cook some breakfast next. Uh, where batteries are sitting at around 20%, so we've bypassed the switch now so we can drain them all the way to empty. So this is a, a real test. We've got no backup, we've got no camera, car, or anything. We're doing this whole trip in one vehicle. Um, it's quite heavily overcast at the moment, but the solar will still be producing a bit of power. So we've actually unplugged the solar rig as well. And we're gonna completely flatten the batteries in the next kind of 10, 15 minutes. Um, and then we're going to plug the solar back in. And we're gonna show you guys how much sun a good panel can produce in these heavily overcast stormy conditions. And how long it's going to take to get enough juice back into the batteries so we can actually crank the vehicle and get out of here and get on our way. So that's what we're doing this morning. Um, I'm going to rip into breakfast now and, and we'll uh, get back to you a little bit later on. Empty, charge me ASAP. <laughs> Gotta get a photo of that. 11, 11 volts completely gone. Mm -hmm. Oh, just disconnected. Because it starts to reduce the Bluetooth range to conserve power when they're empty. That might not link up again. <laughs> might get it up here. Nah, it won't link. It yeah, shuts down the RF frequency to conserve power. So that's it. Fridges are offline, everything's gone. We are gone. All right, just made a couple of omelets, that's it. We've used the rest of the power. Batteries have shut down. We are offline, fridges are offline, everything is offline, people. All right, that's it now. We've cooked breakfast and the batteries are completely empty. So they've completely discharged to 10 volts and shut down. Um, I can't even bring them up on the app anymore because when the battery shut down <clears throat> to conserve power and save and protect the cells, the BMS goes into a very low power mode. Um, so it stops broadcasting the Bluetooth signal. And that's it, the fridges are now offline. Um, inverter sucked all the rest of the power out on our little omelette maker over here. Um, so what we're going to do is actually manually turn the fridges off now. Um, switch off all the lights, loads, inverter, everything. Um, plug the solar back in <clears throat> and we're going to watch these two batteries top back up and see how long it takes before we can crank over the car. All right, here we go guys. So we've um, got 1% state of charge back into the batteries. The solar rig is running at about eight amps for 25, 30 minutes as we packed up the car. Um, so here we go, we're gonna crank over and see if we can get this guy going again. Hey, 
bang, just like that. And, and off we go. Back online, fridge is back online, gotta turn everything back on. Charging at 66, 70, 67 amps now off the alternator. The alternator's ramping up to 70 amps. So we're gonna to top these guys up nice and quick. We keep packing them and get out of here. All right, so we're back in the car now. We've packed everything up and we're gonna continue on. Um, so you've just seen a really, a really cool test where we've deliberately fully drained and flattened the batteries. Um, plug the solar regulator back in <coughs> off the rooftop mounted solar panel it's on top of the rooftop tent and um, you know we've been 30 minutes we've been able to crank over the car after getting just a couple of amp hours back in um, you know the battery's back about one one percent state of charge maybe pushing two um, and you've just seen how the car started no problems now with our dual battery systems you've always got the load switch uh, in the back of the vehicle so at that 20% range, it's going to cut your loads off, get in, you start your car, you go. Um, you're never going to be ever in a position where you've totally flattened the batteries, it's impossible. But if you ever do find yourself in this situation for whatever reason, because you've, you know, your, your amplifier's locked up and suck power all night, or you've left lights on, or you've done something silly, and you've completely flattened your batteries, um, you know, by the time the sun comes out in the morning, the solar regulator will bring them back online. Virtually nothing you got to do. You get a few percent back in and crank over. Now, the magic number we're looking for, we wanted to get the batteries back over in around 12 to 12.2 volts. You don't ever want to try to crank over when they're in the 11s. Um, a, you probably won't start the car, and B, there is a slight chance that you might actually damage the boards because they're going to try to protect at a very high current um, so you don't really want to be doing that so once you're in the 12 volt range 12 2 or higher um, you're good to go as you've just seen and um, vehicles back online the alternator is charging turn the fridges back on um, inverters back on all our gears back up and running so you know we're back on the road now um, yeah, we're just going to take off and I'll keep driving to you guys, uh, talking to you guys. So, um, yeah, we run a very powerful solar regulator in our battery packs. So it's got an 80 volt input and a 20 amp um, output. Okay, so it's 20 amps continuous. Now, it means you can virtually connect any solar panel you can dream of. Okay. It's quite a powerful solar regulator, so ideally you want to run a decent panel. Now on this vehicle we're running a 370 watt Trina monocrystalline module. Um, you know, it's got an open circuit voltage there around 40 volts, um, and most of them sort of set around 10, 11 amps. Now, um, that panel, a good quality panel like that, uh, which we call essentially a, a commercial module. Well, the ones that you typically find on buildings in your house and on houses, um, they're the best sort of solar panels you want. Stay clear of all the RV panels, okay? Uh, all these suppliers um, bringing in these kind of no-name solar cells and putting their stickers on, all those things are useless. Um, get a good com quality commercial module um, which is going to be a lot cheaper anyway. Um, better warranty, better performance, um, and you know, and make the most of our um, you know high performance solar regulator that's built into our batteries. Now, <coughs> with uh, with a good solar module like that, um, you know, our solar regs will run at 20 amps output, um, continuous all day long. We don't do power, we don't temperature compensate. They're designed to run flat stick all day long. Um, which means on the back of a panel like we're running on the roof here you can easily yield an excess of 100 amp hours a day easily um, for the standard kind of tourer that's running a single fridge basically means you're popping along touring indefinitely um, the battery's fully charged you got the alternator there um, plus the solar reg on top of it so it's to combine the combined solar um, supply of both the alternator and the solar input 
um, you know, with the two batteries, uh, the twin 90s or the two 130s and a good solar panel permanently fixed to the roof of the vehicle, um, you can, <clears throat> you know, you could easily run a couple of fridges like we have been and inverters and like you've seen um, that we're running a big 3000 watt inverter <coughs> we were cooking all last night steaks frying pans this morning making coffee got the coffee machine running I'm a big fan of a an omelet press omelets are great simple easy in the morning very hearty fill you up keep you going all day um, and uh, you're just never running out of power plenty of lot plenty of redundancy um, you know reliability and um, heaps of power we have put seven years of engineering into our new hybrid dual battery systems okay um, we've been producing now don't forget DCS have been producing and supplying marine batteries for going on seven years now um, when we first launched we had quite a strong focus on the marine market we used to do a lot of boats uh, fishing boats luxury yachts, cruisers, motorboats, motorhomes, etc. Um, we only really looked at the four-wheel drive market 18, 24 months ago. And in this short period of time, um, we've developed this dual battery system um, specifically for the four-wheel drive market. And, you know, these batteries are very well designed. Um, you know, we were pushing into the high 70 degree temperatures uh, yesterday running quite hot through the desert deliberately in low range really working the engine quite hard um, yeah, I think the maximum we logged on the on the app was about 78 79 degrees absolute maximum um, keep in mind guys our batteries will run up to 110 degrees before we shut them down there's been nobody anywhere in the country uh, be able to reach those temps and shut them down and you know here we're running this vehicle really hard in November very hot conditions um, obviously now the conditions have changed it's dropped a bit in temperature today with this storm coming through the Simpson and getting a lot of rain which is quite unique out here uh, very rare to get um, you know several days of rain out in, in this region um, and uh, you know our batteries are designed for it there's no issues of those no issues of, with high temps um, yes you'll shorten the service life of the cells every single battery in the market will suffer from a reduced um, service life at high temperatures but our cells are designed for it our battery management systems are designed for it and you don't have to think about and worry about those things you just enjoy your touring knowing you've made a choice and decision to go to a more reliable storage system um, over anything you could imagine sticking in an engine bay you know I mentioned the redundancy side of our batteries just a little bit earlier. Um, going back to that, um, you know, the we've always specialised uh, in cylindrical cells, okay, and we've and we've kind of mastered that mechanical design um, over the years. And the reason we've stayed with that and we've done that, um, there's two major factors for that. One is the cylindrical cell design gives us um, a lot more redundancy okay from a mechanical perspective so if you lose or drop a cell or two over several years for whatever reason the battery pack stays unaffected because that cell isolates itself um, and and the battery pack continues on if you look at the prismatic <coughs> cell design if you drop one cell on a prismatic pack um, that's game over. You've dropped 3.2 volts and your battery pack is no longer no longer um, functioning. The BMS locks them out, locks it out and that's it. With the cylindrical cells being a lower capacity, um, you know, we've got 20, 30 cells in each string. Um, you drop a couple of those, no problems. You're not even going to notice a difference. So from a mechanical redundancy perspective, um, that is a, a major advantage, especially when going in engine bays um, and, our, you know, and, our cons and our customers taking um, their vehicles to extreme locations and, and requiring that level of redundancy and reliability. Um, it's actually getting quite muddy through here at the moment.
So yeah, driving from the Simpson uh, during a storm in the rain is actually <laughs> quite an interesting time. Um, now the second thing is uh, <coughs> um, safety. So you know, if you have thermal runaway um, at a cell level and you have a 50 amp hour capacity cell run away from you, you know, it's going to release quite a lot of gas. Um, and there's a high potential of, uh, you know, getting external damage and etc. If a small cylindrical cell runs away from you, it's a very little amount of energy, it is a lot safer, um, you know, and it's a lot easier to deal with. So, those are the underlying two major factors why our entire company all our product lines, our housing batteries, our marine batteries, our, our hybrid four wheel drive batteries, our extreme um, 80 amp hour heavy duty batteries are all uh, produced using um, cylindrical cells that we uh, buy under license and actually manufacture specifically for our company um, to our capacity specifications. I'll talk about a, a little bit about the vehicle that we're in. So we're in a, um, a Toyota Fortuna. Um, it's basically a Hilux wagon. Um, it's twin lock. We've got an ARB front um, air compressed diff locker. Got the factory electric rear, rock, rear locker. <coughs> it's riding on King uh, 2.0's front and rear. And we've got auxiliary auxiliary long range automotive fuel tank in the rear. Um, <coughs> there's uh, a set of drawers in the back and a fridge slide. Um, which we got from Drifted Camping, um, awesome drawers. Um, so there's quite a bit of quite a bit of uh, weight on the back of the on the vehicle. So we've got uh, quite heavy duty springs as part of that King upgrade, and we're also running um, Airbag Man uh, polys in the back as well. Um, they're sitting at 20 pounds, 20 pounds the whole time. Um, Right, it's quite flat, and actually the, the shocks are um, all on maximum, so the full 21 points of adjustment, the front and rears are at maximum, because uh, we've got a lot of weight in the vehicle with all the camera equipment, food, water, and everything else we're carrying on the trip. Um, so the car runs really good, we're at 26 pounds front and rear on the tyres, uh, BFG, mud terrains, running the KM3s, and um, yeah, engine's got a engine's tuned um, over the guys at Legendex, running one of their three-inch exhausts as well, and it's a um, it's an awesome machine. It drives through the world. It's a really good tourer. Uh, it's done 60,000 clicks, done the Cape, been on Fraser 20 times, um, it's done the Victorian High Country twice, and um, yeah, awesome touring rig. Running the factory alternator, um, and obviously the. Um, twin 90 amp hour, so the 180 amp hour dual battery system, so the hybrid dual battery system from us, and um, yeah, really nicely set up car, and it pots along, suspension's fantastic, um, you know, we're sort of sitting around 30 k's an hour in between the dunes here, as we're crossing from the Simpson, and plenty of traction up the sand dunes, just strolling along. Um, there's no need to be running low range through here, you're just potting along in second and third gear. High range all wheel drive, um, high range four wheel drive, you know, pretty much the whole time. And it's been a uh, pretty cruisy trip. So we're heading now, um, <coughs> we're going to be approaching uh, Popple Corner on the Northern Ter Territory, South Australia and Queensland border. We're going to be swinging around to the left, and taking the rig road, um, and heading back south around to uh, back to Inaminka, and then we'll sort of head back to the east and make our way back to Brisbane um, after we've done this kind of three-day trip through here. So I think we've pretty much gone over everything we really wanted to to show in this video, and. Um, We'll concentrate on the drive because there's some storms in the region. There's another storm coming in from the from the northwest at the moment. Um, last night the wind was really, really strong. We lost a whole bunch of gear, and we probably uh, yeah want to keep a push on today and get back out um, 
you know, to the other side of the rig road if we can. So we'll leave you guys to it for now. Uh, wrap up this video. I hope you guys learned a lot um, by listening in and pointing out a few things, you know, especially unique about the DCS range of um, four-wheel drive hybrid batteries. And uh, yeah, safe touring. Happy days.